Welcome to our segment on inserts. Let's start by learning how the inserts structure works in Cubase. Cubase SX has six inserts before the EQ and volume fader and two after. The output of each insert fits the input of the next one. For this reason, the order in which you use your plugins will influence the result you get. Feel free to experiment here. The first six slots, or prefaders, are suitable for most plugins. The postfaders, or the last two slots, are used for processes such as dithering and compression. Cubase SL has five prefader inserts. And only the output channel on Cubase SL has a postfader insert. Adding effects to your output bus will affect your entire mix. Cubase SX users have the option to use insert effects on the input buses as well. This allows you to record with effects. This can't be undone later on, however, if you change your mind, because the effects become part of the audio file itself. However, it's not a common practice, and as a rule of thumb, you want to record dry sound. Dry means no effects, no EQ. Now let's select a track on the tracks list and click on Insert. Click on the Insert slot, choose the appropriate plugin. The plugin window will open. Here you can adjust your plugin settings. To switch the plugin on and off, use this button. Next to it is the Bypass button. This lets you bypass the plugin effect. The difference between these two buttons is the first one turns the plugin on and off and saves CPU power, and the second one lets the plugin run on in the background but without applying it to the track. To monitor your CPU usage, use the VST Performance Monitor. This button allows you to access the plugin window. On the VST Channel Settings panel, there are a few more buttons related to inserts. Here you bypass all inserts. Click that to edit inserts. And here is where you reset your inserts. The Insert Display Mode drop-down menu allows you to choose Presets, and also to modify, modify the way sound passes through the effects. Let me create a surround sound audio track. Here we see a graphical representation of how the signal is routed through the audio effect plugin. Double click on this area. That will open the routing editor. This gray rectangle here represents the plugin, and these lines are your channels. The small squares above and below represent the inputs and outputs to and from the plugin. The left and right front channels are processed through the plugin, and these four bypass it. 
A broken line indicates a broken connection, and thus the signal will not pass through. You can move your input and output connections using these arrows here. If you deactivate the link checkbox, you'll be able to move the inputs and outputs independently of each other. For example, the channels right now are configured in this way. These two, our left and right surround channels, are processed through the plugin and routed to the left and right front channels. The center and low frequency effects channels bypass the plugin. The left and right front channels bypass the plugin and mix with the left and right surround channels. The output left and right surround channels are muted. If you want to assign a stereo or mono plug-in to all the channels on the surround track, you can do it in this way. Load three different instances of the same effect and then assign the appropriate pairs, inputs, and outputs. If you have the same effect on multiple channels, in order to save your CPU power, you may want to route the signal from these channels to the group or effects channel and use only one instance of the plugin. Another way to save CPU power is to apply the freeze function. Post fader inserts will not be frozen. And for more information on group channels, effects channels, and the freeze function, see the previous segments of this course. This concludes our segment on inserts.